Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're going to discuss what max pooling is in a convolutional neural network. So let's get to it. We're going to start out by explaining what max pooling is, and we'll show how it's calculated by looking at some examples. We'll then discuss the motivation for why max pooling is used, and we'll see how we can add max pooling to a convolutional neural network and code using Keras. We're going to be building on some of the ideas that we discuss in our video on convolutional neural networks, so if you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and check it out and then come back to watch this video once you've finished up there. Max pooling is a type of operation that's typically added to CNNs following individual convolutional layers. When added to a model, max pooling reduces the dimensionality of images by reducing the number of pixels in the output from the previous convolutional layer. Let's go ahead and check out a couple of examples to see what exactly max pooling is doing operation-wise, and then we'll come back to discuss why we may want to use max pooling. We've seen in our video on CNNs that each convolutional layer has some number of filters that we define with a specified dimension, and that these filters convolve our image input. So when a filter convolves a given input, it gives us a resulting output. This output is a matrix of pixels with the values that were computed during the convolutions that occurred on our image. So here we're going to be using the same image of a 7 that we used in our previous video on CNNs. Recall on the left we have a matrix of the pixel values from an image of a 7 from the MNIST dataset. Then we have this 3 by 3 filter that's been initialized with random numbers. And now on the right, we have our output resulting from this filter convolving our input. So as mentioned earlier, max pooling is added after a convolutional layer. So since we have this output from our convolutional layer here, max pooling would follow. Let's scroll to the right, and we see that we have some type of transformation of our output here. This transformation was achieved by doing max pooling. Max pooling works like this. We define some n by n region as a corresponding filter for the max pooling operation. We're going to use 2 by 2 for our example. Then we define a stride, meaning by how many pixels do we want our filter to move as it slides across the image. We're going to use 2 for this as well. Then we come over to our convolutional output and we take the first 2 by 2 region and calculate the max value from each value in this 2 by 2 block. We then store that value, which is going to be used to make up the full output from this max pooling operation. In this example, the max of this first 2x2 two two block is 0, since all the values in the block are 0, and then we store it here. We then move over by the number of pixels that we defined our stride to be. We're using 2 here, so we just slide over by 2, then do the same max operation. We calculate the max value in this 2x2 two two block, store it over here, and then go on our way sliding over by 2 again. So we do that all the way until we reach the edge on the far right. We then move down by 2, because that's our stride size, and then we do the same exact thing of calculating the max value for all the 2x2 two two blocks in this row. We can think of these 2x2 two two blocks as pools of numbers, and since we're taking the max value from each pool, we can see where the name max pooling came from. So this process we went through is carried out for the entire image, and when we're finished, we get this new representation of the image. In this example, our convolutional output was 26 by 26 in size. Now, after performing max pooling, we can see the dimension of the image was reduced by a factor of 2, and is now 13 by 13. Just to make sure we fully understand this operation, we're going to quickly look at a scaled down example that may be more simple to visualize. So here on the left, we have some sample input of size 4x4. And now we're going to use the same 2x2 two two filter size with a stride of 2 to do max pooling on this input. So our first 2x2 two two region is here in orange and we can see the max value of this region is 9. So we store that over here in our output. Then we slide over by 2 pixels, and we see the max value in the green region is 8, and we store that over here in our output as well. 
Since we've now reached the edge, we move back over to the far left and go down by two pixels. Here, the max value in the blue region is six, and we store that here in our output. And finally, we move to the right by two and see the max value of the yellow region is five, so we store that over here in our output as well. Now, we've just gone through the complete process of max pooling on this sample 4x4 input, and the resulting output is this 2x2 two two block here. So our input dimensions were again reduced by a factor of 2. Alright, so now we know what max pooling is and how it works. So now what's left for us to discuss is the why. Why would we want to add this to our network? Well, there are a couple of reasons why adding max pooling to our network may be helpful. For one, since max pooling is reducing the resolution of the given output of a convolutional layer, the network will be looking at larger areas of the image at a time going forward, which reduces the amount of parameters in the network and consequently reduces computational load. Additionally, max pooling may also help to reduce overfitting. Now, the intuition for why max pooling works is that for a particular image, our network will be looking to extract some particular features. So maybe it's trying to identify numbers from the MNIST data set, and so it's looking for edges and curves and circles and such. Then from the output of the convolutional layer, we can think of the higher valued pixels as being the ones that are the most activated. So with max pooling, as we're going over each region from the convolutional output, we're able to pick out the most activated pixels and preserve these high values going forward while discarding the lower valued pixels that are not as activated. Now, just to mention quickly before going forward, there are other types of pooling that can follow this exact same process we've just gone through, except for that these other types will do some other operation on the regions rather than finding the max value. For example, average pooling is another type of pooling, and that's where you take the average value from each region rather than the max value. Currently though, max pooling is used vastly more than average pooling or any other type of pooling for that matter, but I did just want to mention that point. All right, now let's jump over to Keras and see how this is done in code. So here in our Jupyter Notebook, I have a completely arbitrary CNN that I define. It has a dense input layer that accepts input of 20 by 20 dimensions, then a convolutional layer, followed by a max pooling layer, and then one more convolutional layer that's finally followed by an output layer. Following the first convolutional layer, this line here is how we specify max pooling. Since the convolutional layers are 2D here, I'm using the max pooling 2D layer from Keras but Keras also has 1D and 3D max pooling layers as well. The first parameter that we're specifying here is the pool size. This is the size of the filter, and in our example, we used a two by two filter, so we can specify that here by providing this tuple that contains two comma two. The next parameter is strides. Again, in our example earlier, we used a two as well, so that's what I've specified here. And the last parameter that I've specified is the padding parameter. If you're unsure what padding or zero padding is in regards to CNNs, be sure to check out my earlier video that explains this. Recall from that video, we discussed how valid padding means to use no padding. So that's what I've specified here for my max pooling layer. And actually, I don't think it's common practice at all to use padding on max pooling layers. But while we're on the subject of padding, I wanted to point something else out which is that for my two convolutional layers, I've specified same padding so that the input is padded such that the output of the convolutional layers will be the same as the input. And the reason I wanted to point that out is because if we go ahead and look at a summary of our model, we can see that the dimensions from the output of our first layer are 20 by 20, which matches the original input size. Then the dimensions of the output from our first convolutional layer maintain the same 20 by 20 values because we're using same padding on that layer. Now, once we go down to the max pooling layer, we see the value of the dimensions has been cut in half to become 10 by 10. This is because as we saw in our earlier examples, a filter of size two by two, along with a stride of two for a max pooling layer will reduce the dimensions of the input by a factor of two. So that's exactly what we see here.
And then lastly, this max pooling layer is followed by one last convolutional layer that's using same padding. So we can see that the output shape for this last layer contains the 10 by 10 dimensions from the previous max pooling layer because of this specified padding. So at this point, I hope you've gained an understanding for what max pooling is, what it achieves when being added to a CNN, and how you can specify max pooling in your own neural network using Keras. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.